So we actually have an industry perspective now. Uh, I'm going to invite uh, Batyan Pors to, um, to come on stage. Batyan is the Director of Inclusive Fintech at GSMA. And uh, so we get a global perspective um, that we can relate to, um, to financial inclusion, which is a very, very important subject um, here in, in, uh, in Southeast Asia. So uh, welcome, Bachan. Would you like to uh, share your screen now? Uh, thank you, John, for the introduction. I'm trying to share my screen indeed. Let me go for this option, see if that works. I, it bounces back, it appears. Uh, you Let me try. This is the little computer icon, is it? Excuse me, John? Yeah, this is the little computer icon at the bottom. Yes. Yeah, I can select, but it doesn't come through then next. Uh -huh. It bounces back. OK, you are, you are using Chrome, are you? Yes, so I am using okay. Chrome. OK, can you just uh, try refreshing your browser? Because that may, uh, may help fix it. Mm -hmm. Let me. One instant, please. So Bajan is joining us from uh, the Netherlands and uh, very, uh, very glad that we're able to uh, bring him here without having to pay for a, uh, an airline ticket. Um, there, I think we are. So good. You want to put that into presentation mode? There we go. Great. I will leave you to it now. Does that show properly? Uh, I think that's, that's interesting. So I, I think that's workable like that. Uh, you should Let's proceed like indeed. That. Yeah. Thank you, John, for the introduction. And uh, my apologies for these, these hiccups at the initiation. Um, very pleased to be part of API Days and be speaking at this convening. Um, thank you for the introduction, John. I'll uh, try to spend the coming 25 minutes or so to share our views on how open APIs uh, provide a tremendous growth opportunity in the field of mobile money. Uh, at the GSMA, I'm responsible for what we call the GSMA Inclusive Tech Lab, which is an innovation facility that provides a collaboration ground for industry stakeholders in the wider mobile industry to work together on those technologies that require collaboration and help drive financial and digital inclusion. And the key pillar of our work is around uh, APIs for mobile money. Uh, mobile money um, being the technology that allows people to receive, store, and send money uh, using a mobile phone. And it's a very alternative, a popular alternative to both cash and banks because it's easy to use and secure and can be used anywhere basically where there's a mobile phone signal. And, and not only that, it's a key tool to help uh, uh, increase financial inclusion and provide people that are unbanked or underbanked with access to financial services. So in the coming 20-25 uh, minutes, I'll try to cover three parts. I'll try to give an overview of where the mobile money industry stands on a global scale and specifically in South and Southeast Asia. Uh, then following the trends, I'd like to speak a little bit about how open APIs are actually driving that industry growth and driving a more digitized environment. And the last component is about how harmonization of API approaches can really help to tackle fragmentation that we see in the industry and help drive the industry to speak a common grammar, a common language, and there we propose as GSMA an industry initiative that we call the GSMA Mobile Money API Specification. 
So that said, let's start with the first part of that um, and speak a little bit about where mobile money stands. So here you have an overview slide based on uh, GSMA research. Um, if that allows me to navigate. Are you having trouble advancing to the next slide, are you? Okay. Yes, I'm still having okay. trouble with that, John. Uh, I think the arrow, does the arrow work there? Yeah. When you hover near the near the bottom of your slide, I think there's, uh, there's a section, move your cursor down to the bottom, um, to the bottom white bar of your slide. And I think the, um, the controls up here. Does that work? Uh, that's working. Yes. Okay. Thank you for okay. that. Um, so where, where does mobile money stand on a global level? In the year 2019, these are based on GSMA results. We crossed a very notable uh, number, uh, 1 billion accounts around the globe, of people having access to mobile money services, uh, a variety of, of implementations, 290 services around the globe covering 95 countries clearly a lot of growth in the industry. And I'll take those numbers for the audience to digest, but if we zoom in specifically into the Asia region, um, there's some very interesting conclusions there. Mobile money may have been perceived for a long time as an African affair, but that's no longer the case at all, I would argue. In South and Southeast Asia combined, there's around 500 million people that have access to such services. And not only that, if you see it, the growth over the last five years on that account, that's a tremendous opportunity. So that opportunity covers two aspects, I would say. It is, of course, a means for uh, financial inclusion, um, serving people at the bottom of the pyramid that uh, are otherwise exempted from access to financial services. But just as much, it's a pure commercial opportunity for players in that field uh, to run a business. And if you look at some further specifics of the Asia region, you really see that the industry is further digitizing. In line, of course, with the wider uh, industry trends in the mobile domain, we really see that the, the, the size of, for instance, digital transactions, as you see from 2015 to 2019, has gone up by 500%. So that space of digital interaction is super important uh, if we look forward into the coming years as well. And where does that come from? Well, that has a lot to do with how mobile money services are becoming increasingly connected with wider ecosystem players, really interconnecting that digital space, providing digital services. So there's a component to that when it comes to uh, interconnectivity between mobile money services and the more classical banking ecosystem. Um, but just as well, it's uh, about connectivities to players that are in the interest of bulk disbursements, bill payments, uh, merchant accounts, of course, merchants and retail, both in physical settings as well as online. Those are some key driving forces of how that mobile money ecosystem is getting increasingly interconnected. And if you look at the number of parties that are interconnected, that is quite a wild number already. Um, uh, we're talking uh, typically of the order of um, uh, tens of different players for specific use cases. And if you look at the, uh, the commerce domain, you're really looking at tens of thousands of merchants that are already connected. More so, we clearly see upward trends in that in terms of how the industry is evolving in the coming years. And evidently a clear driver for that are open APIs. The ability for third parties of all sorts to seamlessly plug into mobile money services and offer their services that require mobile money functionality. So if we drive, dive into that in a little bit further detail, I think it's good to first look at the mix as we see it as of today. So a, on this plot, you see a comparison between the region and the global break breakdown, and you see also comparison between number of transactions and value of transactions. So first high level observations, of course, that in terms of 
uh, number of transactions, airtime top up is very dominant. And that is evidently one of the original drivers of mobile money, right? And buying minutes. But if you swap that around in terms of value of transactions, you see a different picture where actually peer to peer transactions are very dominant, which is also one of the more traditional functions of uh, mobile money. I send money to you, you send money to me. But if you dive into that a little bit in further detail, you see that in that quadrant where there is a mix of different use cases, there's a lot of expansion happening there. So you see that there is a significant part already of, of bulk disbursements, bill payments, international remittances, all sorts of advanced use cases that require ecosystem interconnectivity. And actually this plot does not conveal that um, actually we see a strong growth in those areas in the digitization of the ecosystem. And therefore, if you look at uh, after, after us running surveys with main players in the industry, main providers of mobile money services, if you look at how they value ecosystem development, there is a clear indication that uh, yes, they have a strong interest in that and they strongly see the value in that. Um, uh, half of them response, they see that uh, uh, to a large degree. And I would even like to add that this graph is skewed towards the global picture. If you would ask the same question in the Asia region specifically, that number would be very much more dominant even. So where does the industry stay if it's apparently so important? Well, this gives you an overview of the number of use cases that are currently supported across the industry. You see that half of the providers um, support 11 to 15 use cases to date. Uh, there is a tail, of course, of, of parties that are lagging behind that have only a, a couple or, or even no use cases. And there are some players that are advancing, uh, leading the way forward. And we clearly see that this, this is growing as well over the years, and we anticipate it will continue to drive the industry forward. Now, if you then look at what type of use cases they provide, this gives you an overview of such possibilities. And first of all, I guess, uh, just by the sheer number of use cases plotted, it shows the opportunity in terms of diversification of business purposes. Uh, there is a myriad type of use cases that you can enable if you open your financial services, your mobile money services to third parties. We see, of course, that uh, uh, there is a top range of uh, 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 use cases in the domain of uh, retail, bill payments, disbursements, merchant payments that are already heavily explored in essence. But even when it comes to deepening the opportunity of such use cases and enriching them with specific uh, functionalities, there is still a lot of ground to be gained as well. So all in all, clearly a moving field with lots of opportunities. Um, not only in terms of, of possibilities of type of services you can expand into, but also as I tried to highlight earlier in terms of business value. And if we look at that in terms of how parties typically, typically try to uh, uh, leverage this opportunity, you see that they're exploring uh, a vast variety of different business models, but there is some convergence to approaches, although there are still lots of different options. Um, many of the providers really try to make the APIs open in the sense that they are free to access and the revenue models are based on different monetization sources and that can be based on uh, transaction fees or sometimes also based on overage models or pay-as-you-go consumption of APIs. There is a variety of options there. The bottom line there, I think, is that the convergence is to make those open APIs really easily accessible and seamlessly integratable. So maybe as an intermediate summary of, of this part, I've shown a little bit about where the mobile money industry stands in the Asia region and the role and opportunity that APIs provide there. Well, clearly, uh, APIs, open APIs can lead the way to ecosystem growth and really enable third parties to integrate seamlessly and build that interconnected uh, uh, ecosystem. 
It leads also to the growth, therefore, of ecosystem transactions. So that can be in the domain of retail, merchant payments, but very important use cases as well, remittances, bill payments, the bulk disbursements. And, and ultimately also, um, beyond that business case, there is a clear societal benefit for it in terms of reaching vaster financial inclusion of people uh, that are otherwise not contributing or not included in the economy in the same degree. At the same time, in all this, this, this evolution and all this innovation and expansion of the industry, we also see uh, uh, one clear trend that we address at GSMA, which is a trend of fragmentation. There is a steep exponential increase of APIs being made available across the board, um, but very few of them are actually interoperable and very few of them are actually harmonized, speak the same language. And also based on our um, uh, research that really shows back, uh, so the majority of uh, mobile money APIs that we see are simply proprietary. Um, um, of course, there is a, the matter of openness, whether they are available already, that you see on the left hand of this plot. There's an increasing number of parties deciding to open up their systems through open APIs. Um, but you also see on the right hand side that concern that we address, which is that there is this level of fragmentation. 60, more than 60% of the respondents of this survey um, indicate they work with proprietary APIs. Um, and uh, we see that there is uh, a bottleneck there and that is limiting the potential of the industry to really take this off. And in that way, we have been working over the last number of years already with the industry to try to harmonize, see if there's a common grammar that we can uh, define together with players in the industry to make sure that there is that an alignment and, and, and more interconnectivity possibilities across the industry. And for that, we have developed the GSMA mobile money API specification, which proposes a harmonized API um, um, across the industry. So that would enable parties to interact seamlessly with mobile money accounts and really therefore also simplify and accelerate the ability of third parties to integrate with mobile money services. If we want this to be successful, we really believe it should be designed for and by the industry. So it's a collaboration um, of industry players that in order to ensure a harmonized approach. And last, uh, it really aims to reduce therefore the complexity, having that harmonization um, and, and making sure that the API is really serving the needs of the industry and, and addresses the, the capabilities that are required by parties acting in that space. So if we zoom in a little bit on where that specification stands today, basically it's, it's pretty evolved. It supports all the main use cases that you see uh, in the mobile money space. So we categorized it in eight and different use cases, the core ones that you really see across the board, merchant payments, disbursements, international transfers, peer-to-peer -peer transfers, recurring payments, account linking, bill payments, and agent services. So really covering all those typical use cases that mobile money providers offer and that third parties want to tap into one or more of these use cases depending on their needs. And talking about the needs, I think this is also a particular relevance if we map that back to the Asian, Southeast Asian context, because it mainly also serves four of those key use cases that we have uh, um, asked the industry about, what's really on your radar? What businesses do you want to um, evolve in the coming years? And as we progress on this initiative, um, I want to emphasize that it's really an industry initiative that is driven through collaboration. And because only through collaboration, if the industry is on board, we believe that uh, there is this buy-in to really enable that, that, that harmonization. So a collaborative, a collaborative industry initiative that uh, aims to really tackle real business needs. Um, 
We want to bring together as well both the providers, so mobile money providers, for instance, that enable, that offer the open APIs, but just as well the demand side of that. So any type of stakeholder that is interested in a particular use case, we are interested in, we're interested in talking to and getting involved, bringing supply and demand or API providers, API consumers together to drive that industry forward and align on that approach. And increasingly so, we will therefore also invite the industry to partake in our working groups to focus on specific use cases, specific audiences interested in those use cases and see if we can advance that to the benefit of all stakeholders of that industry and, 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 and that growth potential. So that's something about the vision that we have and how we want to collaborate with the industry and structure that. If you look in terms of what we provide already to the industry in terms of assets, well, clearly there is this API specification, which provides uh, uh, coverage of APIs for all those use cases I just touched upon. Um, but that comes, of course, also with uh, the, the, the OS specification, collaboration platform, a compliance uh, platform that I will talk about in a little bit. Uh, where parties can really validate that they indeed uh, follow the specification. In terms of the um, tools that you need, there's a developer portal with all the reference document documentation. You can test your implementation, uh, simulate it, uh, examples to use cases and Postman collections. If you'd like to find more about that, developer.mobilemoneyapi.io is where you find all the resources. And beyond that point, we're also trying to get clear recommendations, not only on the API layer, but also on the security implementation. So it comes with a set of guiding principles, guidelines, in terms of how to set up the security of such open API connections. And uh, we're working towards maybe also including some business logic around that. But in terms of the assets that we offer to the industry, um, when it comes to uh, parties that are thinking about uh, um, supporting um, uh, this initiative, um, uh, we provide support to API adopters, of course, with the gap analysis support if you have a, an existing API already, um, uh, or technical support. Um, more and more, we also focus in terms of validating the actual compliance with the specification. Very shortly in the coming month, we'll be launching a new service of ours, which really validates uh, for the industry whether you are compliant with the specification. Um, and if that is indeed the case, we will grant that with a GSMA compliant mark, which we believe is very interesting for players in the industry, also towards your stakeholders, and really driving that, that adoption. And uh, for parties that are interested in that, we're always open to consider joint marketing, to work together with developer outreach and events, um, anything that we can do to support this initiative to the benefit of the wider industry. With that said, I think I would like to close uh, my session, but not before saying that if you want to read more about some of the uh, uh, data also, that uh, I reported on today, um, please do reach out to us in terms of uh, uh, any connection that we can have, happy to share the resources, and more importantly, happy to share and discuss any opportunity for collaboration on this front if you're working in the space of mobile money um, as a mobile money provider, but at least as much also as a party that is interested in using mobile money functionalities in your business. So that said, I would like to close. And uh, John, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this session. Thank you very much, uh, Bajan.